What if I told you that there's a method of brewing beer at home that's even easier than extract brewing with beer kits? What if I told you that it only takes 15 minutes worth of effort and that the entire brewing, fermentation, and serving process is contained inside an entire single vessel that can fit in your fridge? Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Pinter, which I really think might actually be the world's easiest way to make beer at home. Pinter is a Kickstarter company that got its start in the UK, and it saw great success there, but now for the first time, it's available in the US. Now, this technically is a review video, but I am really excited about the whole process because what I think we have here is potentially the next big thing in terms of getting people into home brewing at absolute minimal effort. If you've done any sort of all grain brewing or extract brewing, you know that brewing is a pretty intensive process. It takes a long time. And I mean, brew days for me as an all grain brewer take about four to six hours on the average. This took 15 minutes. So how does that even work? Well, the folks at Pinter have a pretty cool invention here. The Pinter itself is a combination of a fermenter and essentially a cask. Brewing the beer itself is really very easy. Basically, the brewers at Pinter have gone the extra mile to brew a beer for you and then turn that into extract, which then gets fermented to turn into beer at your home. This wort extract is called a fresh press, and uh, Pinter makes dozens of these. And if you look on their website, there's various kinds of beer styles and various kinds of strength. Um, and they all seem to be pretty good looking. As a result of that process of creating the wort extract fresh press, um, you do lose some of the hop aromatics and the hop oils, so they do include these uh, little hop shot type things, basically. This is a hop oil extract that you can add into the Pinter as it's fermenting or after it's fermenting to add that fresh hop hoppy punch. Each pinter and each fresh press will actually produce about 12 full 16 ounce pints of fresh beer. Um, if you're using a 12 ounce glass, you can get that to go to about 16 or 17 pulls, um, but that's actually a decent amount of beer. If you're somebody who's not really used to making your own beer at home, that's probably enough to last you a decent amount of time. This is only slightly larger than those mini kegs that you can sometimes find at the store. Um, and it fits actually really comfortably inside of a fridge. And that's one of the coolest things about this. It's really heavily engineered so that it's very similar to a cask in that you can ferment in it pressurize it, absorb that pressure into the beer itself to create that carbonation, and then you can cool it down and pour from it as if it was a cask or a keg, um, all in the same vessel. The experienced brewers here might be asking, what about the yeast and the chunkiness that comes out of the fermentation? Um, well, that's one of the other cool things about this. There's actually a method that they use with a self-sealing valve here in the bottom of the pinter to let that yeast, after the fermentation is finished, drop out and um, separate itself from the actual conditioning vessel. Then similar to a cask or a keg, you would take it and then you would let it sit and rest in one place for a while before tapping it. And you're actually able to pour yeast-free beer this way. Also because of innovations in their valves and their uh, tap technology, you're able to actually pour the entire volume of the pinter out using just the natural carbonation inside of the pinter itself. No external CO2 needed. And I've said this a lot, but what you have here is a all-in-one brewing and serving system. There's no additional equipment needed at all besides a beer glass. That's crazy. Because of that fact, I think this is the easiest and the best way to get into home brewing if you're just dipping your toes in and you want to find out what it's like to make your own beer at home. I think this is a fantastic gateway. And if you were looking for a really, really cool present for somebody who might enjoy home brewing at home, it's not one of those crappy Mr. Beer kits. Give this a shot and see what happens. But let's go through, let's talk about the unboxing, we'll talk about what comes with the kit, and then I'll actually show you how to actually go through the entire brew day brewing up the Session IPA for today. So without further ado, let's get into it. Unboxing the Pinter is simple and straightforward. It's not a very large box, which makes this all pretty easy when it comes shipped to your door. You'll see everything else neatly packed inside of it. Uh, and in my case, I actually got two pinter packs, uh, which are your ingredient packs. However, uh, normally this would come with a single one. Here I am unboxing the brewing dock, which is the uh, attachment that actually collects and contains the yeast cake and the trube after brewing. And then here is the actual box that contains the pinter unit itself. 
Despite the Pinetier being made entirely of molded plastic or aluminum, I was actually still quite impressed with the quality of its construction. It feels very sturdy um, and the surfaces are pretty smooth overall. It comes with one handle on either side of the Pinter so you can easily grip it and shake it. You're gonna need to do that several times during the process. Here's the Pinter pack and I'm using this as the Big Mouth Remixed Session IPA. The Pinter packs have several different components. This is the fresh press. And then also comes with a uh, packet of dry brewer's yeast. It also comes with a hopper, which is your uh, hop oils, basically, that you can add later on in the process. And also a purifier or sanitizing agent that's in a dry form. You'll mix that with water later. So now that we have everything together, let's make a beer with this. So first we have to sanitize it. Set the carbonation dial to the five position, and then you're gonna open up your main cap on the pinter. Uh, it just simply unscrews. Then verify that the tap collar is actually completely closed. Then you're gonna take your sanitizer and dump it in to the pinter. At this point, collect some hot water and you're going to pour hot water into the pinter to mix with the sanitizer. Try to be a bit more clean about it than I was. Um, but basically you fill it up to the internal fill line and it should dissolve the sanitizer in there. If you're new to brewing, just remember, you have to sanitize as well as clean your equipment because microorganisms can survive cleaning and can spoil your beer if you're not careful about it. So this is why this step is very important. You wanna sanitize all surfaces that will come into contact with the unfermented beer. Once you have your main cap back on, just give it a good shake for about a minute to fully dissolve that sanitizer and then let it rest for about 10 minutes. Connect the brewing dock and then flip the unit over so that liquid from the sanitizer enters the brewing dock and sanitizes that. Once you've let everything sit in there for about 10 minutes, you're gonna want to disconnect the brewing dock by again, rotating it uh, about a quarter turn and letting it drain. Some of the liquid will come out, but not all of it will come out of the pinter because that's self-sealing valve. You're gonna take the carbonation dial and set that down to zero so that it's wide open and then flip the pinter over and let the sanitizer run through the carbonation dial to sanitize that. Shortly after that, connect the tap to the front of it and sanitize the tap as well just by opening it all the way and letting sanitizer run through it for about 30 seconds. And once this is all complete, remove the top and then remove the main cap on the pinter and flip it upside down to empty out all of the sanitizer. This is a no rinse sanitizer, so you don't need to worry about adding any extra water or anything to it. It will uh, be perfectly fine and perfectly safe on its own, leaving a little residue in there. Set the carbonation dial to five. Next, get some room temperature water, uh, preferably about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and adding that into the pinter, uh, up to the fill line. This is gonna be the water that forms the basis of your brew. You don't want it to be too cold because the yeast will not activate if it's too cold, and you definitely don't want it to be too hot because that will also be bad for the yeast. Next, we're gonna dissolve in the liquid from the fresh press, which is the main part of your pinter pack here. It's very thick, sticky liquid that uh, flows rather slowly, so just be sure to warm it up a little bit before adding it in, and then squeeze it all out of the bag as much as possible, like rolling it up like a tube of toothpaste. It usually works pretty well. Next, we'll add the dry brewer's yeast here. You don't need to rehydrate this. You can just add it directly on top of the liquid and it'll be just fine. Just make sure the liquid's not too hot. Uh, at the same time, you can also use your own yeast strain if you want to, if you have some already on hand. Next, you're gonna screw on the main cap, just being sure it's fully seated. And again, that the carbonation dial on the back is set to five. Then just shake it up vigorously for about 30 to 60 seconds to get everything nice and mixed and then add in the brewing dock using the same motion to attach it as before, being sure it's lined up and fully seated. Next, you'll flip the entire pinter over so that the liquid enters the brewing dock and then leave it like this for about a week, preferably at a temperature of about 65 to 70 degrees. We'll get the job done nicely. 
Halfway through the brewing process, you can add the hopper, which is the uh, hop oil dispenser. You can unscrew that cap there, unscrew the cap on top of the hopper, and then you simply screw it in, break the seal on the hopper jar itself, and the oils will work their way into the beer. This might take a few minutes, um, but this is actually a pretty cool system because it actually doesn't lose all that much carbonation at all um, and works pretty well. Once the oils are in the beer, you can remove the hopper itself and put the cap back on securely. Once your fermentation has completed after about one to two weeks, you're gonna take the brewing dock off the base of the pinter. This is gonna be kind of messy, so just make sure you're in the sink. But as you can see, here is a carbonated beer, and oh look, there's some yeast coming out. So this is actually a good sign. Uh, all your yeast has gone down into the dock there, and then you'll wanna clean off just all the surfaces here. Um, and at this point, your pinter and the liquid inside is ready for conditioning. This is where we take all that, that carbonation that's inside of the pinter and get the beer cold so that the CO2 will absorb into the beer itself. You can go ahead and put the uh, lid on and the tap for the front of it so that you can serve it as soon as the conditioning phase is over. And then just stick it in your fridge, probably for about two to three days, let the carbonation fully dissolve, and very, very soon you should have a fully drinkable beer. The tapping experience was pretty good overall, I'd say. I um, was able to chill it down and then I actually had to take it out of the fridge in order to actually pour the beer just because of the space in my current fridge. But as you can tell, the beer looks amazing. Um, absolutely crystal clear. That's naturally clarified like that, which was pretty impressive. Um, and the head on it is pretty solid as well. Overall, the flavor of the beer is actually a lot better than I expected it would be. Um, with these introductory extract kits, typically there's a bit of a reputation that they have for producing really bad beer. Um, this is not a bad beer at all, actually. I'm really impressed. It tastes like an IPA. It's got a good character to it, and it's entirely very drinkable. There's a bit of an apple note in there that I think might be due to fermentation. Besides that, though, the beer itself tastes clean. It tastes bright. It has nice hop character. It's fresh tasting, well carbonated, and um, all things considered, I am very impressed with the level of quality that this uh, Pinter kit has delivered. I don't normally say stuff like that. What's cool about that too is I didn't actually go through a brewing process to make this. I just added the ingredients in and let it ferment. Because of that, my talent as a brewer doesn't necessarily influence the flavor of the beer. Um, the only influence on the flavor of the beer that's kind of a variable is just the temperature uh, control of the actual pinter itself. I left it in relatively stable conditions. In fact, I didn't put it in a temperature controlled environment at all. I just left it in the basement, which is a pretty constant 68 degrees. With that in mind, this result is really truly very impressive. So now I'm gonna talk about some, uh, what I think are gonna be frequently asked questions about this uh, that some of you may have, try to answer those right off the bat, and then we'll talk about pros and cons before we close out the video. The first question I anticipate getting is, how is that fresh press made? So basically, if you're an extract brewer, you're familiar with malt extract. It is a malt extract syrup. However, this is a particularly tailored malt extract syrup. So it's a hopped extract, first of all. So you're gonna get the right level of hopping from the beer you're trying to brew with that extract. And it's also had all of those uh, specialty malts added to it already. You're not combining light malt extract, dark malt extract, wheat malt extract, like all those things that you want to do to build a an extract beer. You just have it all ready to go in one package. And because it's hopped, you get the bitterness dialed in where it's supposed to be. It actually eliminates the need to boil it pretty much. Um, so that's why you can get away with making this beer without the mash or the boil step, and you have that very small time investment at the very beginning. The second question I anticipate getting is, what's the pressure rating on the unit and um, how do they control the safety aspect of that? Uh, so the pressure rating for what I could find is two and a half bar, which is about 35 PSI. That amount of pressure is no joke joke, um, but the fact that it's rated to a higher pressure than you would probably experience during brewing is a good thing. Um, and also, that carbonation dial on the back is a spunding valve. So assuming that you've set the pinter up in the correct orientation, that spunding valve is going to allow that excess pressure to escape 
um, before it builds up to dangerous levels. This is also your airlock. In all normal operation, that carbonation dial should operate very, very well as a pressure relief option because you can turn it all the way down to zero and that will open it all the way up and allow you to have that pressure escape. If you guys have any other questions uh, that I couldn't answer here, please drop them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but if not, I'd point you towards the Pinter team themselves. The contact information is on their website. Now let's talk about the pros and the cons for this system. The first pro is really that everything is all simple, straightforward, and that the whole concept of the system is just super easy. Um, everything is easy to understand the way that it is set up, um, and it just takes all of that hassle out of brewing. And um, I really, to this date, haven't found a simpler way to actually make real beer. Second pro I have is the app. There's actually an app that comes with the Pinter itself. Uh, it's free to download and it will help you uh, organize all of your, your brewing sessions, basically. It guides you through every single step of the process in great detail with animations to show you exactly how to work it. The UI on the app is great and it works really well. It doesn't. I haven't had any issues on my phone. Granted, I have the Android version. I'm not sure how the iPhone version works. It'll notify you things like, hey, your, your fermentation's finished. It's time to move into your conditioning stage. Hey, it's time to add your hopper. Um, it's time to put it in the fridge. Oh, it's ready to serve. Like It'll do stuff like that based on a timeline. You can also use the app to interface with their website and order new kits, um, parts, and contact uh, customer service as well. I think it's actually a very, very good design. The next pro I have is just the quality of the beer is honestly better than any other getting into homebrewing kit um, that I've found. There's a number of starter kits that are all in one that you can buy that are very popular for Christmas items and you might be able to buy on Amazon. Um, and they are notoriously terrible at making good beer. Their ingredients are old, they use no-name yeast brands, and things just don't seem to always work out. This beer here is quite the step up from those kits. And that's why I still think this is one of the better ways to get into home brewing in the first place. Another reason why this is awesome is because of that cask style design. You eliminate the hassle and the time investment of bottling entirely. Um, you don't need to worry about conditioning for carbonation. Uh, it actually all takes place entirely inside the vessel itself and then you can serve it very, very easily and right away too. Uh, which is just a very powerful thing when it comes to getting new people into beer because bottling is almost always one of the biggest obstacles for getting people that want to start brewing to continue brewing. <laughs> if you're starting out with bottling, oxidation is a huge risk. By leaving it and serving it from the pinter, you're eliminating that entirely. The cool thing about this is that it takes advantage of pressurized fermentation, which not only helps you get your beer ready faster and fully carbonated by the time it's done, but it also helps eliminate some of the off flavors that can result from fermenting uh, poorly. It's definitely not a catch-all, um, so if you're still treating your fermentation like garbage, you're not going to have as good of a beer as otherwise, but the pressurized fermentation really helps eliminate a lot of the issues that you would otherwise face if you had a non-pressurized fermentation. I think that concept is really, really good for brand new brewers. The next pro I have is the brewing dock. It really accelerates that conditioning time by separating the yeast and the trube, which is your basically the solids that drop out of beer um, when it's finished fermentation. Uh, by separating those things from the actual beer itself that you're serving, that's how this got so clear so fast. In most styles of beer, it also improves the flavor when you separate the beer from the yeast. And the last one I have on the list is both a pro and a con, which I'll get into in a minute here, but the size of the pinter. It makes it very easy to store in your fridge. It doesn't take up that much space. Um, and even I think if you had a decently sized mini fridge, you could even fit it in there, depending on the size. Um, but it fits very, very well and doesn't take up much space in a regular full size fridge. Um, and that is actually a really, really good thing. It also means that you're shipping a smaller package to your door, which is always a lot less hassle than bringing in a full five gallon system. However, there is a con side to that, and we'll segue into the cons now, in that you're not getting a large batch size out of this. You're getting uh, only about 10 full-size pints out of it. Um, I misspoke earlier, it's 10 pints, not 12 pints in the overall package. I have yet to actually fully drink through the entire batch, um, so I will update with a pinned comment if there is any difference between the 10 as advertised. But of course, if you're using a smaller glass, you'll get more pours out of it. I understand that that is a design trade-off, but that can be a con for some folks. The next con I have is that this is a cost-saving measure, and I understand why it was made this way, but it's made pretty much entirely of plastic with some aluminum parts. Um, and there's a lot of individual cracks, crevices, and um, like valve parts and stuff in there that make it rather difficult to clean. And um, truth be told, 
that all works together to potentially introduce uh, some sort of contamination into the pinter. Uh, that may be very hard to get out. Plastic is notorious for uh, getting scratches in it and very easily harboring flavors and potentially microorganisms that could spoil the beer. I would get ahead of this by trying to sanitize this as thoroughly as possible and clean it right after you're finished drinking that beer. Um, that way you can get ahead of the curve of uh, potential of you know having some crud stuck in there that you can't quite get out. Um, so just keep that in mind, but in my opinion, that's still kind of a bit of a risk uh, overall. Second con is the tap design uh, is innovative in that you can actually uh, vary the flow rate significantly. Uh, the reason for that design is so that when you have less pressure in the pinter as you're drinking more beer and you have less liquid, that you can open up the tap further to uh, kind of regulate the flow of the beer with the foam involved in it. Unfortunately though, I found that this design does not prevent foaming uh, really all that much. As you could tell when I was pouring this beer, there was a ton of foam that came out of that tap even at the lowest setting. Um, so that does make it a little bit difficult to regulate. It's not a big deal in my opinion because it all settles out in the end anyway, and it's not like you're at a bar and you're paying for foam. Another con I have here is just from a brewer's perspective, the app, while it's great, does kind of encourage you to rush the process. It says fermentation only takes one week and that conditioning only takes three days and that, you know, all of these things happen in a very short period of time. That's not always true, not always the case. With your fermentation, I'd really recommend going almost two weeks with it. Uh, with your conditioning, maybe a full week. Uh, by being a little bit more patient with the beer, you're gonna get a better result than if you rushed forward with the process. So I would just recommend giving it a little bit extra time. And the final con I have here is the price. Um, so the price for the US version of the pine tier is $199, um, which is still a lot less than some intro to brewing kits, uh, some all-in-one kits, and it's certainly less than a lot of other pieces of home brewing equipment out there. I think it might just be a little steep right now because it is still in the kind of Kickstarter phase. Um, maybe a little bit of additional budget is needed there, but in the UK, this is looking at about 100 pounds. As of December 2023, 199 US dollars is a lot more money than 100 British pounds. Of course, there's obviously budgeting reasons for that, and you know, you're crossing into a brand new market and you're going across the Atlantic, I get all that. Um, but it is a decent amount of money. Just keep it in mind, weigh your, your budget versus what you want out of this, um, and that will help you make an informed decision. Overall though, my experience with this product was actually a really surprisingly great one. Um, and I'm actually looking forward to the next batch that I'm gonna brew up in the Pinter, which is the Stout. I think it's a novel concept, I think it's really well executed, and I honestly think it is potentially the best way to get into home brewing if you wanna just get your toes in, like I said earlier, or it's a great Christmas gift. So if you're curious about checking this thing out, please look at the link in the description. If you wanna save a little money, Pinter is setting up a promo right now, so go check out the description box for more details on that um, and that should last through the end of the year so if you want to jump on that Christmas train it's a good time to do it anyway guys if you enjoyed the video please hit that like button before you leave and subscribe if you haven't already product reviews are not the normal thing I do on this channel I do a lot more brewing so if you're getting into brewing please check out the rest of the videos that I have on the channel and I'm sure you will not be disappointed if you want to support the channel please consider picking up a t-shirt like this one I have plenty of other designs uh, including this one in my merchandise store which is linked down below in the description box and uh, I also have a patreon my patreon supporters are really helpful in making this channel a better place you've helped to increase increase the production quality of everything um, and help me get some pretty cool gadgets. So I have other options to support the channel in channel memberships and the super thanks button. Either one of those things really helps me out quite a bit. And I have an Amazon store where you can find all the recommended homebrewing gear that's on Amazon as well as the channel production equipment if you're curious about those things. Please also consider following me on Instagram and Facebook at The Apartment Brewer where you can find some more frequent content updates as things move along. You'll also get to see what's coming to the channel in the near future. And last but certainly not least, if you're still here, thank you very much for watching the entire video and sticking around at the end. These things take a decent amount of time and effort to put together, so if you're still watching, it means a lot to me, and you have my thanks. So, this one goes out to you guys, and until the next one, cheers. Cheers.